So my question is, is how are you doing? What's your one year report look like? How, what, what, how are you growing? What's, what's, how are you, how are you today than, than you were a year ago? Hey, real quick, y'all, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Habakkuk. And you probably got to Google that, but it's in the Old Testament, the book of the prophet Habakkuk, and then Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3. Uh, like I said, I like to take, I just wanted to kind of sit down and talk. I, it just makes me feel like that I, um, I can really just speak from my heart. I don't know, I guess it's the stool, but I just wanted to share with you. And, and as I mentioned, I feel like that uh, January is just kind of a foundation laying month. I like just kind of like lay out for the whole year. Um, as you can see that we're in this uh, season that we're calling Stronger Together, and uh, and it's been really cool what God is doing and has done so far. And um, and as Holly mentioned, we, we're one year in, and all the accolades and the love has just been overwhelming and we're so grateful for it. Um, I, I, about this time last year, I, I, I shared a couple of talks, sermons called I Am Committed and how I was committed and how I am committed to serving you, our church. And and I, I want to just, before we get into this, just what I want to share, and I won't keep you long, the Cowboys aren't playing this afternoon. So frustrating. And know uh, John Wells He's a Saints fan, and, and I'm driving home from watching the game at my dad's house, and, and I'm just frustrated because the Cowboys lost. My cell phone rings if it's not John Wells trying to make me feel bad. And anyway, so got to love it. But anyway, we're, we're, we're going to be quick today, but I just want to share with my heart. Um, but, but I wanted just to share with you a year, like a one-year report of, of some things that I've learned that I, this year. And, and, and I just wanted just to share them with you just so you kind of know what's kind of in my head and what's, uh, what are the things that, that kind of took me, I guess, by surprise. I wasn't really, um, I thought I was ready for, but I wasn't ready for it. No, number one is this, is, is the weight of worrying about people. I, I, I knew that pastoring would come with that weight, but man, I'm just being real. I worry about y'all. It, I mean, it's, it's, it's a real thing. I really worry. And it's, I, I guess it just, it's the mantle of, of being a shepherd. It's like you really just worry about people. It's like when you don't see them or you don't hear from them, you worry about them. It's like, oh my gosh, I hope they're okay. I hope they're all right. I hope everything's going okay. And then you had COVID and then you hear all these COVID people dealing with COVID. It just, it, the worry is, has been one of those things that I, man, I just have, I wasn't prepared for. I mean, I'm doing, I'm, I'm managing it well, but just, I just, I say that to you because I just want you to know I love you and I worry about you and I want you to be, be good. Um, the also number two, and I knew this a little bit, but it, it was just confirmed the work of preparing a sermon. Lord Jesus, every preacher, y'all better high five them even if it's a bad sermon. It's a lot of work prepared. How many preachers are out there? I know Mr. Brandon, you're, you're a pastor, former pastor. You, if you're a preacher, you know it, you can't just throw something together in 30 minutes, y'all. I mean, it, it's a lot of responsibility. You feel the weight of people's lives on you and as you should. And, and so, and then I, you know, I, I, for years I've preached like on a rotation. But this thing comes every week, y'all. Every single week. I, had a, I was in the coffee shop the other day. And there's a great man, um, a pastor here locally, uh, just an incredible man named Pastor Rocky Pope. He, he uh, pastors in Mesquite. And I was in a coffee shop, had my laptop open, and I'm studying. He walked by. He just happened to show up. And he goes, studying for your sermon, huh? I was like, yeah, I'm just getting it all together. He goes, my dad was a pastor and he told me, he says, Sundays come around every three days. <laughs> and if you're a pastor or a preacher, you understand that because it comes around every three days. Uh, number three, here's something, and I just called it this, the Monday hangover. Now, that ain't that kind of hangover. Y'all got all judgmental real quick. It got quiet in here. I'm not talking about that. Did you know that this is not a Kelly thing? This is a pastor thing. This is a preacher thing. You have this feeling of like, you know you delivered what you know God laid on your heart, but, but you have this feeling, kind of this feeling in the pit of your stomach like you didn't do enough. It happens every week. 
It, it, it is. And, and I'm not telling you all this to say you got to like feel sorry for me or pray for me. You pray for me. I take that. But I'm just wanting you to know kind of what it's what it's been like for me. Uh, and so I can be transparent, for, for, you know, for you. And and so but, yeah, there's this feeling that where you just uh, you just don't know if you did enough. You you just because it's such a responsibility to preach the word that you just hope that. That it connected, you know? And so there's this always, Holly, Holly tells me, I would say, on Sunday afternoons, Monday, I was like, oh, man, was my sermon okay? And first, when she first, we first started this, she goes, yeah, baby, it was good. And now she's like, are you seriously asking me this again? It was great. God used you. Just move on. And, uh, and it's just a Monday hangover. It's, we call it a Monday hangover. It's not my word. It's really what a lot of pastors uh, call it. But it, it, and, and so that, that is a, that's kind of a thing that, that we feel. And, and uh, in fact, there's something that is so true. It's, I've heard this said, too, is that pastors should not trust their emotions on Mondays. Don't make a lot of big decisions on Mondays because you're, you're trying to get through unpacking Sunday. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy, but it's a real thing. Mr. Brandon, am I telling the truth? Others that you know that you've preached, you understand that's the weight of, of the, the calling. Here's another thing, building a new church. I wasn't ready for that, y'all. That's a lot of work. I mean, we ain't even getting going yet, really, but it's just the responsibility of that. So you, I'll update you a little bit on that in a moment. Uh, but, uh, man, managing the church finances, that's such a great responsibility because of the stewardship. I came from a legacy of pastors Pastor Danny, who was an excellent steward of God's money. So you feel that responsibility, as I should, but that was one of the things that I want to make sure that I'm being very wise in my approach to that and making sure, and I'm thankful that we have a, a, a good system. We have a finance committee that, uh, that we've put in place that help, that help, and that are, uh, it gives us a place of compliance and accountability and all of these things that help me and guide me, and I'm thankful for them. Y'all know who you are, and uh, I love you for what you do and how you are a blessing into my life um, in this season. And the number six is, is the vision. The vision, that's, I'm going to talk about that in a moment, uh, but the vision, making sure that I am clear. That's my responsibility as a pastor is making sure the vision is clear. So that, that's kind of some things that I've learned. And here's some things I'm working on. I'm working on, I want to listen more and talk less. Sometimes I just get tired of hearing myself. Y'all can laugh. It won't hurt my feelings. Yeah. And sometimes I'm like, Kelly, just shut up and listen. And, and so I'm really working. I want to talk. I know I, I talk. That's what I do. What God's called me to do is do a lot of talking. But, I, but when I'm one-on-one, I'm trying to learn how to, to, to listen more and, uh, and, and talk less. I think Holly wants that for my life, too. <laughs> and uh, number, number two is, is staying in my own lane, staying in my lane. Because sometimes when you're a pastor, you just want to get in everybody's business and try to uh, fix it. And, and it's not my job to fix. We're a team-led church, and so we want to make sure that we do that. So I'm trusting more, learning how to trust more, and to stay in my own lane. And, and here's the number three is staying off the treadmill of performance. And I had a good friend, Pastor Ben Daly. Uh, he's, we had breakfast right before I took over, and, he, and we, he, we were just talking, and he knew the season that we're in. He knows Pastor Danny very well. We, he's been a part of of uh, our, our lives for many, many years and knows our story. And, uh, and I remember he just told me, he got real serious. He looked at me, he says, listen, let me tell you something, Kelly. One thing you better not, he goes, you better stay off the treadmill of performance. And I was like, what does that even mean? And he began to unpack it. He goes, because when you start doing things and God blesses it, you feel like you gotta, out, you gotta outdo it. And you got to outdo it. It's like we're going to do March Madness again. We did March Madness last year. It was really fun. It was really good. Had a lot of great feedback on it. We're going to do it again. But in the, as a pastor, you're like, I got to make it better. I got to do it better. I got to make sure, you know, and you, you start carrying this anxiety. But, you know, I have to remind myself, this ministry is God's business, not mine. I, he's the CEO. I'm just a manager, you know. And so I, I keep, it helps me keep a perspective. Yeah, I've got to still make sure that I do what I do and to prepare and making sure that we have a great experience in worship. But I don't need to get into this place where I'm trying to perform. Yeah, I don't need a performer. You need a pastor. And so, so that's one of the things that I'm trying to do. Um, another thing, too, is, is caring for the spiritual well-being of our staff. Making sure that they're good because uh, I know what it's like to be on staff and to feel like you're dry. 
Your, your well has ran dry and you're trying to lead and you're trying to encourage others when you feel like that you are just, you or yourself are dry. It's not easy being on staff at a church and, and it, it takes a, it's a calling in itself. So that's one of the things that I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm working on and do better is, is caring for them, making sure their hearts are good and making sure their, their walk with the Lord is, is strong and not strong, but growing. And uh, so that's something. Number five is managing stress. It can be a stressful job sometime. I'm managing. I'm really, really proud of myself, honestly, because I thought that this would be really, really a high, high stress thing. And it has its days. But however, I feel God's grace covering me. Thank God for his grace, man. I feel his grace covering me every single day because the things that I am going through are not going through. It sounds like alarming, but the things that I I'm responsible for, that's a better word. Uh, when I'm, if I would have thought about that two years ago, it would just stress me out thinking about it. So I know that it's his grace activated in my life. And, uh, and number six, here's, here's the thing I'm working on is not being too hard on myself. It's easy to do that. It's easy to be so hard on yourself and feel like it should be more, should be better, should be this, should be that. And, uh, so sometimes I just got to give myself a break and that I'm human. And, uh, I hope you're okay with me being human. You know why I share this with you. Because, this, because it's important that, that I'm transparent with you and, and you see my heart. Because, because you know what that does? It keeps pedestals away. Because the minute that you put me on a pedestal, then, then you're in trouble. And the minute that I put myself on a pedestal, I'm in trouble. And so I always like to be, a, it, it's, probably, you know, it's probably something that's not real common to be just honest and transparent about what God's doing in my heart. But that's what I choose to do because I think it keeps my mind right. It keeps you knowing what you can pray with me uh, about. And then we continue to grow together. How about that? Is that cool? Is that cool? So my question is, is how are you doing? What's your one year report look like? How, what, what, how are you growing? What's, what's, how are you, how are you today than, than you were a year ago? Not so much in the church, but just even with your personal life is what does look, what does that look like? What does the vision of your life look like? Vision so important. And, and as I mentioned, this is one of the great responsibilities that I carry is making sure that we are a church with a vision and that we're going somewhere and that, that, and then not only that I have a vision and, but that I make sure that I, relay the vision in that it's clear. Uh, Habakkuk tells us this uh, incredible, it's common, and many of you people around church, you know, Habakkuk 2 tells us uh, this, where the prophet Habakkuk is sharing about vision. And he says in verse 1, he says, I will stand at my guard post and, and station myself on the watchtower, and I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and how I may reply. I thought this was a very interesting. When I am reprimanded. When I'm re- reprimanded, when I, when I uh, am corrected, how do I respond? Uh, how you handle correction often will determine how you navigate the vision of your life. You need somebody in your life to correct you. I need somebody in my life, and I've got a support system. I still have Pastor Danny, who I talk to often, very, very, at least once, twice, three times a week, very often. I always welcome people in my life that will be a, a corrective measure in my life so I can grow because I know my vision. If I can't, if I can't cor- have myself corrected for the vision of my life, then I can't cast vision. You know, so it's very, very important. It's interesting that Habakkuk says this. And then he says this in verse two. Then the Lord answered me, he says, write down the vision and inscribe it clearly on the tablets so that one who reads it may run. That's my job is to write the vision, making sure that it's clear so you and we as a church can run and we can move forward. And it says this, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. Now, this verse three really gets me because it, it sounds so It speaks so clear to really what vision is. It says this. Now, pay attention to all of this language here. It says, for the vision is yet for the appointed time. It hurries toward the goal. I'm like, yeah, it's appointed time, and it's hurrying toward the goal, and it will not fail. Then it says, though it delays. I'm like, Habakkuk, you're wrong for this. Though it delays, wait for it. Wait for it, for it will certainly come, and it will not delay long. It's like it's an appointed time and, it, and it's hurrying, but it's going to delay. But it's going to be an appointed time. But after all those moving parts, what you got to do, you just got to wait for it. 
You just got to wait for it. You got to wait for it. A vision is a funny thing. It's a very funny thing of how we navigate vision, not as an individual only, but even as a church, how we navigate vision. The Lord has laid uh, on my heart this year a vision called Stronger Together. And I'm going to talk about that real quick just briefly, but, uh, but in, in more of a long-term goal, he has given me a vision for a one, three, and five-year vision for our church. Number one is to, is to be a church without a building. To be a church without a building. As, as you know, we are grateful for this place. And uh, Mr. Brannon is here who, who is a part of the school and owns the building. And, and uh, he's, he's, he's a man that doesn't like a lot of attention, I can tell. But I always want to give honor to who honor is due and how he allows us to be here. And this belongs to Cityscape Schools. This is Buckner Preparatory, but we're able to meet here. And this was our former church. Um, but we are, we are in a transition between here and and there where God is taking us. And so the Lord laid on my heart is what would it be like to be a church without a building? Now, for the record, for everybody here, we're, we're going to have a building. We're going to be right here. Thank you, Mr. Brandon, and, uh, for that. But however, I'm talking about us being, yeah, you can clap your hands. We appreciate the man of God so much. But what does it mean for us to be the church? You know, as we learn through a pandemic, we realize, oh, we can be a church without a building. And, and so we want to just continue to develop ourselves as the church. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we want to do that. So we want to be a church without a building. That's where God's laid it on my heart for us to do this year, to continue to make us who we are as a, as a church and who we are as a, as a congregation and what, we're, what God is doing in our lives individually. I say it often that our church is the overflow get this it's the overflow of what God is doing in your life Monday through Saturday that's really what the health of a church is is when God is doing something in your life and we just celebrate on Sundays what God is doing in your life in my life so that is what being a church without a building is then a three-year plan is is to be a church reaching the entire family we we reach the entire family but we have holes we have holes. Uh, it is my heart to make sure that, we're really, that we are reaching the millennial and we're reaching the 20-something, the younger, right out of high school, uh, making sure that's an, untapped, um, that's an untapped group that we have not uh, been so effective with. And that's important to me. So for the next three years, I want to make sure that we are connecting the dots of all generations, that we are a, we are a multicultural church, but we're also a multi-generational church. We want to reach people in their 60s and 70s and 80s, and we want to reach them when they're five, six, and seven years old. We want to do that. I, I think about, I think about the middle school age. That is such a key age right now. The devil is attacking the middle school age. They say that the suicide rate of middle school has, as school schoolers have just gone up. We've got to be the one. That's an age that I want to be a lot more intentional uh, with. We have uh, Tanya who's directing our youth ministry, doing an incredible job. Uh, give her a hand. I love and appreciate you. You're doing an awesome job. But we want to do more. And so we want to make sure we're reaching every age and every part of the family, every generation. I, I, I love our senior adults. John Wells, you know, is over our, our, our senior adult ministry, and we're getting that rolling now that COVID is hopefully going away in Jesus' name where we can do some things. And so we're going to reach our seniors in a greater way, and we're going to reach our nursery in a greater way, and everything in between. So that's a three-year goal. And the five-year goal is to be a church increasing in diversity. And you, you look around, you go, well, we're a diverse church. It's not really. There's a lot more. You know, a lot of times we call diversity, uh, we got the top three. We got, we got Caucasian, we got African American, we got Hispanic. And, and thank God for that. But there's way more to reach. There's way more to reach. And, and even the community that we're headed to in Sunnyvale, did you know that, that uh, Spanish speaking is number four language in the city? Number four. There's Asians in that city. There's, there's so many different races out of the top three that we are top three that we recognize. And so I want us in five years to be where we're reaching a whole nother level of diversity. How many people said, we've always said it, that's what heaven's going to look like. 
So that lets us know, yeah, heaven's going to look like this, but it's really going to look even greater than this. And so we want to be a church that is reaching diversity in a a greater level. So that's that's where we're going. And we want to head toward the new season. As you know, we're building. We bought land in Sunnyvale and uh, we are working on getting the final um, the final contractor selected. Uh, There's a lot of moving parts. If anybody's in the building industry, you know, you can go to Home Depot and you can realize that everything has changed. Everything has changed. And this is a a mock-up. Don't take pictures of it because it may change a little bit. So don't like, hey, this is my new church here. Just where that's a, I wanted to get it in front of you to show you what our new church is going to look like. And we're going to, of course, have stuff in the lobby and we'll show you a lot more about it. But pray for us as we continue to, to select our general contractor because we have so many moving parts that we're had to move around because of COVID. Because we, uh, we can't do price estimates that the banks want because of, uh, we, because, we nor an architect can make those determination because the cost of steel today is completely changed than it was a year ago because of COVID and getting stuff is different now. What used to you could get in, in 30 days sometimes is pushed out for six months. And so all of these things are, are, are factors. And so, but we are meeting and we're, we're making a selection with a general contractor, which will help us get a cost estimate, which then we can talk to the bank. It's a lot of moving parts. And so thank you for your patience. We are working, trying to make it happen. And uh, I'm excited about it. This year will be the year that we will begin to just launch this and we'll be all over uh, showing you exactly what it's all going to look like. And I can't wait. I cannot wait. And that's why I read Habakkuk in where it talks about uh, yet for appointed time, it hurries. But, but toward the goal and it will not fail, but it, though it delays, wait for it. It's like that verse right there. I need to print it and put it in my office because it, it will keep me. It'll keep us as we continue to move forward. So this is our year to be a church without a building. That's just what the Lord has laid on my heart. And he's laid on my heart this, this verse in Ephesians. It says, uh, uh, chapter three, verse 17 through 19. It says, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge and that you may be filled to measure with all the fullness of God. That's our scripture that we pulled stronger together, that we may have power together with the Lord's holy people. So my vision for this year, our vision for this year is this, to be a church growing together, stronger in faith and overflowing in the fullness of God. Growing together, stronger in faith and overflowing in the fullness of God. Growing together is what I want us to do, but I want us to grow together in the word. I want us to grow together in the word. I really believe that we are living in a time where the word of God is being attacked like never before. There's a a movement where people are questioning whether the word is really the infallible word of God. It is under attack. And it's a time that the people of God, our church, that we come together and really get into the word. I've said this before. I believe there's coming a time where we got to have to go get the, the Bible in its pages form. And we need to have that close. We're thankful for technology. I'm thankful for iPads. I'm thankful for screens. I'm thankful for um, awesome. It's great that we have Bible apps. And I'll tell you about that in a moment. And, and all of these resources. But don't get it twisted. You need to get you a Bible with pages. Because sometimes it could be to the point where only thing you can really believe is the pages that you open up and the Holy Spirit that's speaking through you. I really believe that we've got to make sure that we don't, and I, I'm all for the new, but we got to make sure we have a Bible in our hand and that we can open it up and say, what spirit of God, what are you saying in your word? I want us to grow together in the word of God, grow together in the knowledge of the word and the love of the word, the application of the word, the, growing in our confidence of sharing the word. We need to grow together in the word of God. And a lot of times we, 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 uh, we find ourselves beating ourselves up because we just don't have an interest in the word. Let's just be honest. Sometimes it's like it's, we would rather watch Netflix. Just tell the truth. 
And it's no condemnation. That is called human nature. Don't let super spiritual people confuse you or frustrate you. They have their days too. But what we need, we need to pray that God will give us a confidence in at least sharing the word that we know. Because sometimes we get so, we, our, our, our self-esteem concerning the word becomes under, under attack and we feel like we don't know enough so we don't share anything. And if the, if the enemy can just silence us, then he wins. But if, you can, if it's just John 3, 16, oh my Lord, just share it. Just share it. If, if it's, you know, Jesus wept. I mean, find a sermon out of Jesus wept. Do whatever you have to do to apply the word and to share the word. Because I believe we need a daily diet of the word. I think we, we've got we've to do that. Joshua 1.8 says that the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but shall meditate it on a day and night that you may be careful to do all according to what it's written. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. The word is the key for success in our life. So we've got to make sure that we do it. We want the Bible in its pages. But we also, we want to use resources. I want to encourage you. There's a resource I think they're going to put on the screen. It's called the Bible app. And if you don't have it on your phone, it's a free app. It will give you daily devotion for you so you can... um, so you can follow along. Did you know that you can search for our church? And the notes that I'm preaching today is on that Bible app right there. You can go to it. There's resources that you can use to follow along. There's plenty of technology to help you. Like this app has, a, like I said, a daily devotion. You don't have to be a scholar. Just a daily diet. A daily diet in the Word. It will help you. It will strengthen us. It will make our church stronger together. We will be better and stronger when you do your part and we do our part to grow in the word. And not only grow in the word, but pray the word. I I said this the other day on Facebook Live. Pray the word. Did you know that your prayers will come alive if you just begin to pray the word? If you pray, James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. That prayer goes, God, I thank you right now. I speak against the devil. I speak that he will flee from you. 1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Father, I thank you that you are great and there is goodness in me and there is purpose in me. Isaiah 54, 17 says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. I, God, I thank you. I know what I'm facing at work. I know what I'm facing on my job, but that weapon can't be formed against me. And all of us, you, you feel the shift right now with me just saying three verses. Imagine if you do it in your own life and then you, there's no weapon formed against me with prosper. And then all of a sudden you'll just throw one in there for free. It says, so for if God is for me, then who can be against me? And all of a sudden you'll find something coming out of you that you didn't even think was in you. That's when we make a commitment to grow in the word. We need to pray prayers that excite God. We need to pray prayers that that make God respond. We need to get a confidence in our prayer life that says we are growing and we're going to pray the word and we're going to grow in the word. Here's another thing. Just give me about five more minutes. I know it's a little late, but stronger in the stretching of our faith. I want us to be stronger in the stretching of our faith. As I was praying and preparing this week, three words that just dropped on my heart that I wrote down. Ask for more. And I just like, wow. Ask for more. And when I first wrote it down, it scared me a little bit. Isn't it funny sometimes that that we become a little bit afraid to ask for more? It, and the reason why it become, we become a little afraid because we're afraid that we're going to be disappointed when it don't come. And we think that the vision, the appointed time, and wait for it, and we get so frustrated with the, the waiting and when is it going to happen and the timeline of God compared to our timeline, I find myself a little bit afraid to ask for more. Because really, do I really want to endure another waiting on God season in my life? The Lord laid on my heart, and I don't know if it's a Kelly thing or if it's a pathway thing, but I think we should just grab it. It's our season to ask for more. It's our season to ask for more. It's, it's our season to stretch our faith, to stretch over uh, the, the things that, that, that the Lord has promised us to begin to just stretch. Everything happens. Miracles happen at the stretching seasons of our life. 
when it don't make sense, when it feels uncomfortable, when we're a little afraid to ask for more. Jesus and, and, and the Lord begins to work in the stretching seasons of our life. There's a story in the Old Testament about the prophet Elisha where he stretches over a, a dead boy that had been laid on the prophet's bed. And, and the Bible says that he laid on the child laid his body on top of the child, his mouth on the child's mouth, his eyes on the child's eyes, and his hands on the child's hands. And the Bible says that as he laid there and he prayed, he felt that the child grow warm. And he, the Bible says that he gets up and he walks around the room a little and he does it again. And then the child sneezes seven times. And it was because he stretched over the miracle. He stretched over. There may be some dead things in your life. You just need to stretch over them. You need to stretch over because faith isn't faith unless it's stretched. And when he stretched over that child, he covered up the problem with faith. See, we've allowed the problems to be in our face, but you got to stretch your faith over the problem. And, And he began to cover that child and he began to stretch over that child. And the miracle took place at the stretching season of his life. What if we could stretch our faith? What if we could believe for the impossible? I mentioned about a bank and bank loan. What if we could stretch our faith and say debt free in Jesus name? I need you to stretch your faith with that. What if we can really just ask for crazy stuff from God? I believe it's for your life. It's for my life and it's for our church. Let's ask for more. Let's ask for more. Let's you ask for more concerning your home. Ask for more concerning your finances and your family. Ask for more. I don't care if you've been praying for that lost son and that lost daughter for 20 years. Keep asking. Keep asking for more. Say this year is going to be the year that they're going to walk into this church and they're going to give their heart to Christ. And Kelly's going to baptize them on this stage. Ask for more. I, I believe that we are in a season of asking for more. We have to stretch. These are some elastic bands. And, and here's the thing with elastic bands. It's not based on weight. It's based on resistance. And sometimes we're trying to figure out why we can't handle the weight. We, it's simply because we can't even handle the resistance. What do we do when God says not yet? We got to keep asking for more. We got to keep stretching our faith that even though we're in a season of resistance, I'm not going to just give up. I'm not going to drop it. I'm going to keep dealing with the resistance. Keep asking whatever it is I'm believing for. I'm going to deal with the resistance because I know that if I can pass this season of resistance, then God is going to begin to do some things in my life like I've never. This is a word for Kelly James. You don't even have to take it. But I'm just praying that the resistance is here to make me. It's not to break me. So I'm going to continue to allow resistance in my life because that's where faith happens at the stretching season. Does that help anybody today? So we're going to be a church that's going to ask for more. We have to see beyond the stretching season because we may, I feel stretched as a pastor, as a new lead pastor. I feel stretched as we're building a building. I feel stretched in a lot of different ways, but I have to make sure, and we have to make sure that we can see past the stretching seasons of our life. I read a story about Walt Disney. Disneyland was already built in California, and he had this vision to build Disney World in Orlando. He dies before Orlando is built. At the time that they had the grand opening, His wife, his widow, was on the stage, of course, as the guest, honored, the honored guest. And the MC pulls her up and says, hey, boy, I sure wish Walt could have seen this. She answers two words. He did. He did. So we've got to make sure that we're a church that we're seeing through the stretch that God is doing something in Sunnyvale already before we get there. That God is doing something in our lives even before we see it. We have to say, even though I may not see it, I can see it. Even though I may not can grab it and it feels like a resistance, I'm just going to continue to see in the future of my life that God is doing something in me. And God is doing something in you. Are you guys here? So we have to make sure we have to ask for more in the stretching season of our life. And number three, and I'm closing with this, is overflowing in the fullness of God. There's nothing more that I would I want to see in your life. And I'm looking at everybody and even online is to see you live in a season of overflow. The fullness of God. 
just overflowing in your life. That the struggle that you've gone through, the pain that you've endured, will be covered up because of the overflowing presence of a good God. That's my desire. I read the verse. You may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. That you'll be filled with the measure of all the fullness of God. The message says this. Test its length. Plumb the depths. Rise to the heights. Live full lives full in the fullness of God. I've, I've got a, a bottle here. And, and it's interesting because being filled with the fullness of God is like a bottle in an ocean. And it, it floats when it's empty. It just it floats and it goes wherever. And, and, it, and it sinks, however, when it's filled. And, and what makes the difference? It's the cork. The, the, lit, the little cork determines the depth of the bottle. So, so the bottle that is in the ocean really is destined to be the bottle that, that the ocean is in the bottle. So God doesn't desire for us just to be floating. God desires for us to pop the cork out and allow not us to be a bottle in the ocean, but, but the ocean in the bottle. He doesn't want us just floating on top and calling ourselves a Christian. We go to pathways. We're strong together. Look at the t-shirt. Look at, but, but he wants us to be immersed in him. He wants us. He wants all of him to, to be inside of us, that we are no longer keeping the cork, keeping the separation just so we can just float around and say it and we're, we're believers and we're Christians and we're, we're this and we're pathway and this is what's happening. But he wants us to get rid of the cork of our life. He wants us to be submersed. The fullness of God. There's more that he wants in you. There's more that he wants in me. That I, I believe that, that from my life that the last year was just the starting blocks. I'm declaring that I'm just on the runway. I'm declaring for my life and for Holly and myself that in 2022, we're about to take off. I mean, that it's no longer the runway for us, that we're going to begin to see it. It's a stretching season for us, but we're going to see it because we're going to see the fullness of God. We're popping the cork off of our life and we're going to get everything that God wants for our life. And I want it for you. I want it for you. And I want it for our church. I want it to be a, a time to where we can come together and we can really just grow together, that we can grow stronger together, that we can be a part of, of something incredible, even in the history of our church. I'm thankful for the history of our church, but I think the best is still yet to come. I believe there's greatness that's coming. I believe there's, there's stuff that's still coming that, that, we, don't even, that we don't even see yet, there, but I'm just going to see through the stretching. I'm going to begin to declare some things even in this stretching season of my life. How many people are ready to see God stretch you? Stand to your feet and I want to pray with you. Thank you for letting me kind of zip through that real quick. I hope I didn't talk too fast. I just, I just wanted to pour that into you because it, it's time for us to grow individually, to grow in the word. I want us to grow in the word. I'm going to do our best. We're going to do our best to try to give you every avenue to grow in the word of God. We're going to just continue to look for creative ideas. I've given you some resources. Of course, we meet every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. You know, there's Bible studies. We're doing whatever we can. But we just ask you just to stretch yourself into that. Stretch yourself. And, and I'm praying that, that as you continue to stretch in your life, you may feel like you're dealing with some resistance. I get it. You're dealing with some resistance in your life. But I'm here to tell you that if you could just continue to endure the resistance, there's a miracle. There's that thing that you've been praying over is about to warm up. It's about to warm up. And you're about to see something. Something. Your vision is about to sneeze seven times. Your dream is about to sneeze seven times. There's about to be something that's, a, that's about to happen because we're going to step into a season of being full in the fullness of God. That, and, and the first step that we've got to do is we have to, with the cork. Are, are we going to live 2022 with the cork? I mean, are we going to live, I mean, if, just individually, are you going to be one that is, that is um, that's going to just float around? I go to church, I, I, um, 
I, I, I got the t-shirt and I love my church. And are, are you going to really pull the cork out and, and fall into the depths of God to be filled with all that he wants to do in your life and in your heart? Lift your hands. Father, I thank you today for every person. I thank you right now that you're going to just, I just wanted just to take this word just to encourage somebody. I pray, Father, that right now that there will be people that will make up their mind up to just remove the cork. Simple as that. They've been floating, and I'm thankful they're floating. I'm thankful they're floating. But I thank you, Father, that we're about to step into a season of really understanding the fullness of God. The fullness of God individually. That we're about to see ourselves in a greater way. We're about to grow in your word like never before. And we thank you, Father, for what you are doing in this season. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I, will, I know that we're dealing with a little bit of the COVID thing. And if you don't feel comfortable coming down, that's fine. But if you're here today and you feel like, hey, I've been, I, I, I've been living my life with the cork in. <laughs> I know that's a crazy altar call, but, that's, but you've been living your life with the cork in. You, it, it's a, you're doing enough to say that you're a believer, but you're really not just all in. You're, you're just, you're, and you're, you're not just this all, I'm just going to be full in the fullness of God that I'm going to be completely submerged in him. If that's you, can you lift your hand and I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. I want to give you, I see your hand. I see a lot of hands. I thank you for your honesty. And I want to tell you that, that I'm here to just pray that, that, that you will become, this will be your season of being all in. And you will begin to remove the cork out of your life and that you will begin to just see the fullness of God like never before. And that you have felt like you're inadequate and you don't have enough. You don't have the word in you enough to even make a difference. I'm here to tell you, you can make a difference. Raise your hand. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for every hand. I see children's hands up. I see teenagers. I see, I see wives. I see and husbands that are joining into this, God, that they are going to be all in. That the fullness of God is about to just overtake their life. So, God, all of the barriers. It can be little things. A cork is a small thing that has a great impact. And, Father, it may just be the little things that just need to be removed. Maybe there's some people that's been walking out some things to be delivered in their life. And they just, it's just, um, they're, it's almost broken in their life. God, I thank you that today's their day of breaking. I thank you right now that the cork is coming completely out. And we're just going to be submersed in your glory, submersed in who you are, the fullness of God. And we thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. I'm going to have Linda come up and, and others. And if you, if you prayed that prayer, as, as we just continue to worship, I want you just to feel like you can come. And we're going to pray with you and, and just put our hand. If you don't want to, you know, we just stretch our hands, whatever. But if you just want somebody to agree with you, just, just feel free to come as we get ready to close. And, or you maybe have a need in your life. And you just say, listen, I came here because I feel, I feel desperate. I feel hopeless. And, and I want you to know that, that you don't have to leave here feeling desperate and hopeless but Jesus is here to help you and to get you through this season so I just appreciate you so much and while we continue to whatever we're singing let's just sing it and whatever uh while we continue to worship we just appreciate you coming out uh coming and being part of the altar call if you want to if not we love you guys so much thank you so much we're worshiping next week we're going to pray for people it's going to be a powerful charged energized energized atmosphere i'm going to be praying all week that god's going to do something there's going to be a breaking in your life on next sunday you need to be a part of it we love you guys so much thank you for all that you do and we're going to be stronger together in 2022 love you guys